Lakeside Legends, we are revealing PC art for our Chronicles of Rivera campaign starting in the beginning of May. Date to be announced at some point. Oh. Yay! Okay, Die. so um, real quick announcements Aether Realms streams at 5 30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every Monday, unless announced otherwise. And I already mentioned that we're starting this campaign in May. So those are our two big announcements. Um, yeah, we're starting in May, aren't we? We are. It's not too... I, I We're starting after I come back from a wedding. Yay! Yay! Okay, um, I'm Lady Aelor, or just Lore, but I'm Lady Aelor. I guess dot lore on it TikTok. It sounded really weird. For some... Sorry. I'll leave it to Dove to make things awkward, because that's, like, that's like your shtick. Wow! Polishing the mask. I'm just gonna wow. say. I love it. I love it. To be it. fair, that was not meant to be awkward. No, you don't Everyone mean to be. You don't mean for it to happen. I am the resident middle schooler. Endearment. I am the resident middle schooler. I will get all the dirty jokes and then not realize I say them. I apologize. <laughs> it's fun. It's great. And we've had conversations where I'm just like, and then like, didn't mean it like that. Nope. Anyway, yes, Lady Lore is my handle on most things except for Twitter. It's underscore lore because Twitter doesn't like periods, apparently. Um, okay, who's next who wants to introduce themselves? I'm trying to go a little fast because we have a tendency to just gab when we're together. Yeah. And I don't want this to go over an hour and a half. So, so my name is Cole Wolfron. You can find me at Cole, C O L E underscore Wolfron, W. U L F R U N on uh, TikTok is my main thing, but I do have Twitter, I have Instagram, all that good stuff. I'm all those names on there. Just remember, it's Wolf Run with W U L. He's making jabs at me because I did a typo. I love that he just almost messed up spelling. <laughs> I did because I was focused on correcting the misspelling she did. So yeah, Cole Wolf Run, come find me. I do a lot of LARP and cosplay stuff, and I am the dungeon master for this campaign. And the home, the creator of this world, you are all to inhabit. Hi, I'm um, Dove or Dove Uncaged on everything. Um, so there you can find me there. Uh, please come and find me and hang out. Uh, I cosplay. I talk about educational jokes because I'm a teacher. Hi. Um, so you know, if you're my student, you should probably be doing your homework. Um, <laughs> I don't uh, go read a book. Please read a book. There's so Ooh, many read. good books out There's there. There's so many good books. Go oh, read. writing a book you could read. Uh, somebody <laughs> else in this group has written multiple. Anyway, uh, oh, I never need to chat about the one. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so that's me. I am one of the players in this campaign. Am I saying who I'm playing? I did. Oh yeah, play. we actually probably should. Um, okay. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, let's let's do, let's do that. Um, I am playing Karina, uh, Britta's daughter, um, and yeah, I don't know how much else we're saying at no, that point. That's fine. That's it. Yep. <laughs> that's all you get. I'm playing Vidya zero three nine gray. Yep, numbers are a part of the name. Numbers in a fantasy world. What? Hey. All all I hear is. Bunkers and badasses at this point when it's something like that. And that's it. I'm sorry. Really me attack. <laughs> okay, so um since we have our dungeon master with us this time, Ooh. we're going to let him ask us the initial interview questions that all of the players have answered thus far. I will let you know, as the person who was in charge of all this, that the numbered uh, questions are slightly different for each group. Most of them are the same, but just to mix things up a little. Uh, the uh, animal one that everybody loves so much. If you haven't noticed, the animals changed both times. It will be different here also. There's an animal one? There's an there animal. is. Number 11. Oh, Everybody's okay. favorite question. <laughs> I like that question. Okay. All right. Well, I guess... I have no idea what I'm saying for any of these right now. I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> okay, Cole, we're ready. All right. So, first off... What was the inspiration for your characters? Would you like to go first? Do we want to do rollies to see who Oh, that would first? be fun. Okay. okay. We're rolling d12s, by the way, so don't yell at us that all our numbers are low. Yes. Uh, <laughs> 12. 
Or... Wait, I mean, you go first. <laughs> Why? We did it to side. DM, DM, DM decide. Laura, go first. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, my character kind of went on a really long roller coaster. Um, I was just. This is kind of what happens every time I come up with a character. I browse Pinterest for just. I'm just looking at stuff, not for any particular reason. I'm just on Pinterest a lot because I write books and I like creating my own little boards and everything. And I saw this really sweet image of um, this kind of anime character. It was a, a probably a um, original piece, and she just had this really pretty, like frilly, flowy dress on. She's really pale and long blonde hair. And I thought, oh my gosh, that would be really fun to play as like an arcane archer elf. That would be fun. And I forgot about it. And then I was playing on Art Braider, and I came up, I randomly generated the look that is now 039's or Gray's or Vidya's, whatever is going to happen here, um, her face. And I kind of merged the two ideas together, and that's how she was born. Uh, as for her backstory stuff, that was just me being tired of playing a character who constantly has a lot of baggage that has to be integrated into her reaction to the world and everything that happens to her and her personality. I just wanted a blank slate. I wanted her to have no world experience. I wanted to be chill and have her know no better when it comes to things sad and emotions. And she's never even experienced real pain. So she's pretty brand new and that might sound a little familiar to Dove just because I wrote a book with a very similar beginning character. So Oh don't don't worry, I'll still find ways to make her feel the sad. Oh I'm sure there's I would be utterly shocked if you pulled her <laughs> a copycat of what occurred in that book. <laughs> it is I mean, so out there. It is. It's yeah. fantastically so. <laughs> All right. All right, your turn, Dove. Okay, uh, I came in kind of late to the planning of the campaign, so there was a little bit of, um, I felt like there needed to be some more muscle in the group, and I didn't want to play another barbarian. As much as I love them, I have one I love, and I was like, I'm afraid they'll be too similar, and then I'll get <laughs> things confused. And um, so, uh, yeah, that, that was kind of why the class and stuff that I ended up choosing but um also uh in the end when I really started working on um the backstory and the aesthetic of what I wanted for the character first and foremost I honestly was thinking of my twin nephews and I love uh who they are and I really want them to see uh they're, they're seven and they're getting to this point of um being able to start seeing these games and potentially could watch some of my, uh, their, their mom and I have talked about them watching some of Lakeside Legends stuff because I know it is safe for them to watch. Uh, they are seven, so their attention span is not terribly long for this kind of stuff, but we'll see. They also love hearing me tell stories of my campaigns because I will tell them stories when I visit. So I wanted to create a character um, that I thought they would enjoy for different reasons. And so that's why some of the backstory stuff that went into them relates to them. Um, they actually didn't realize it, but about a year ago, they chose the weapons I chose for the character, in part, um, out of a joke. And so uh, there, there's just a lot of little things that I realized not, in, not intentionally, but I kind of started bleeding into the backstory of the character. Um, and then beyond that, I just love women who can kick ass. So I'm sorry, but um uh uh they are i love amazons the valkyries um xena was one of my favorite characters growing yes. up with watching tv shows um wonder woman uh i was huge wonder woman fan still am uh captain captain marvel um uh valkyrie from the thor show yeah it's just like there's just um so many great female superheroes out there that i just everything from jean gray to you know wonder woman is I just don't think they're always represented um, as well as they can be, as far as we just don't see them as much and we're starting to finally. So that was kind of where a lot of that aesthetic and ideas came from of who do I wanna see if I was a little girl seeing somebody who I'd look up to. And yeah, so kind of, it's a little basic and maybe 
female no. himbo? I don't know how that female goes. Female himbo? <laughs> are you playing? Are you legit playing female himbo? I don't. I don't know. Herbo. <sighs> See the herbo? hard thing. <laughs> herbo. I, I struggle with understanding himbo fully. It's like I see it when I see it, and then I struggle knowing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The golden no. retriever. Of well, the Col- Colton knows the backstory. I I would call her. Yeah. I, I think that there probably is definitely some potential of that's who she kind oh, of is in a, just a really awkward way and like i was reading her backstory and i was like i was like did dove make a girl version of like every character i've ever can we played? call it a, a fem a f- is it would it be Fimbo? a fembo a fembo Fimbo. i don't know but that wasn't necessarily intentional but also it's just if, if it happens, it happens. It's hard to, like, n- like pin down exactly how you're going to play a character until you actually oh, start playing it's them. it's so hard. Yeah. So. But I love the idea so very much. Very Every much character true. I've ever played has been like that. I, I, I start playing them, I'm like, this is not where I thought this was going. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, like, hearing y'all's creative process of inspiration, it's like, this world y'all are in, the inspiration was, I needed a world for a D&D campaign, so I sat on a map maker. <laughs> And made eight continents and went. I'm gonna pick one to start here. There. And from <laughs> nice. there, I was like, I literally just over weeks created a world and gods and stuff. And I'm like, I should do this more often. So it's that's fun. How we went. It's a great world it's building. Great is process. fun. And if you yeah. need why help, why I'm not writing a book in the world, y'all are. If if you want to have help doing world building and stuff, go to our Discord because please that's, do. We're, that's yeah. what we're there for. We're about well, we have a, creation. We have a Discord for that. We yeah. do. Lakeside yeah, Village. Do. It'll yeah. be in the chat. We will and right now it's a lot of Lord of the Rings memes. It well, it you is. know. It is. No and one's been asking. all the time, so yes. we, can, we can two two authors and then and then and then Duff here, who is all a teacher, who probably also has some things Actually, to say. Actually technically Duff helps me with my books all the time. She just and, finished uh, one. Yeah. And technically my degree is in creative writing that is what my master's is and i'm supposed to be writing more yeah I'm just we like, were supposed to sprint that one time and i totally forgot to remind you that yeah, was so I know. Long this ago. summer this summer we will hook up a time that we will probably have some sprints well no i i was not feeling well remember you weren't feeling well but then i thought we rescheduled maybe i we thought didn't. we did too eh, i don't know Anyway, that's something we need to do because I need to just light a fire under my Moody's Maximus and get this done um, right and get story. back to it. It was so much better during grad school. We're both, we're both going to encourage you to write stories. I know, all, I know. All three of us need to have like book powwows. <laughs> yeah. I, I literally have a friend who's super mad at me because he was my proofreader slash editor during uh, grad school and my, I don't know. 20 chapters that I wrote so he's literally gotten like 20 chapters of the story and it's on a cliffhanger for like eh. six six years now I don't know how long ago what did I graduate and he's like he's like five years I don't know he's like are you ever gonna finish that and he goes have you given it to Laura to read and I'm all no because it's not done and he goes I did the same you thing made me you read it that. <laughs> oh, so we just need to have book powwows so that Laura and I can bully you into finishing. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. With love, we'll bully you with, with love and encouragement, <laughs> and and judgmental stares. Uh, <laughs> That's... Yeah. Okay, what's the next question? Okay, next question. What inspired the colors for this character? Which I'm pretty sure you already answered, Laura. Uh, well, no, actually, I clarify. So the colors were because she without giving too much away wasn't born naturally and the whole concept was that she would get her colors once she had earned her name so right now she's actually just kind of this blank uncolored doll we'll say just a blank piece of paper that has only slight variation i mean there's some fleshy redness in her cheeks and lips because of the nature of how i imagine her body makeup because you know there are those people who are like super pale and just with super rougey cheeks and lips and fingers and their nose she's kind of like that so born fan base has entered the chat <laughs> what there's a character called the doll in bloodborne and that she's essentially just a living doll like that's all she is but she has rosy cheeks and it just made me think of that but like oh, very know. different characters yeah. though but like she's just a victorian doll that walks around I mean, I kind of wanted her to look like a ball joint doll, um, was how I imagined her without the actual ball joints. Like, she is what she is. She is not fake, 
even though she sees herself as fake. But she doesn't have much in the way of a color scheme, so it's all just whites and grays. So her colors can be added through the campaign. That's good to mm-hmm. know. Yeah. It's a col- <laughs> coloring page for everyone. Yeah, she is a coloring page. Exactly. And she is obsessed with color because she doesn't have any. So when she meets this group, it's going to be a little probably awkward and interesting. It's like, you must all be so expensive. Because color is expensive. This is going to be such an interesting interaction. <laughs> yep, yep. She doesn't know any better. Uh, yeah, for me, um, gosh, some of it stems from her background of where she comes from and um, uh, the where she was raised. I, I don't know how much to say without, like, I mean, stuff that will probably come out very quickly. Um, uh, you know me. <laughs> Well, no, I'm like, do you want me to say? Like, I don't know how much. Well, everybody I'm... kind of gave a little bit of backstory okay. stuff. So it's um, not, we're not, I mean, it, this wouldn't be much of an interview if we had to hold everything yeah, back. Yeah, no, I'm like, uh, um, no, she was she was raised in uh, the Temple to the Northern Gods. So, and following Freya. And so some of her, a lot of her colors stemmed from um, that was kind of the mindset that, um, I started with of okay, what colors represent what with Freya and you know because that's actually, where her background would come from. Let's actually go ahead and switch over to um, I'm gonna put her up since we oh my file's too big for this cord. Okay, it's gonna take me a minute to get you guys that. I'm gonna switch over to the reveal so our viewers can see. There she is. Um, yeah, keep going. Um, so that kind of was where things started with color choices and things like that. Um, and then branched out a little bit with just, okay, um, what do I aesthetically want? And there was a point where I asked for a certain, you know, style of armor and, um, was kind enough to say, yeah, sure, that's fine. And I went, okay. And then I, I just kind of went, I've always loved Sif. Sif is one of my favorite, um, characters from the Thor world and dealing with all that and so I wanted something kind of that flavor because I've always loved her costume I've always wanted to have her costume um and so uh so that you see probably anybody looking at the art now sees a bit of that kind of similarities but it makes sense for the character and where she comes from also so that was kind of what it ended up being and now it's amazing and I love it <laughs> so much so yeah all righty question at number three uh what's the vibe you wanted in the aesthetic for this character what are the vibes guys let's, let's hear them are they good vibes bad vibes <laughs> Vibes. I forgot that I wrote this question in. I would just sit here and answer it. I'm it's so super me- similar, but yeah, go for it. Um, for you me, want, or I, do you want me to go first? You okay? can. You no, know, if you know how to answer this question, answer this question. Um, sure. I. I mean, I kind of did. Uh, definitely. Uh, uh, definitely wanted the vibe of um, someone who's trained to fight, but is also feminine. And um, so I very much wanted um, the athletic feminine and not, you know, super skinny. I mean, she's definitely not uh, larger by any means, but um, it was definitely a balance of, and it's one of the things I love. I love how her arms show because you see this muscle definition, especially around the armband and like where she's holding the shield that shows that this is not there's a certain intimidation factor and um but at the same time she's feminine and soft especially in her face and so it was kind of that balance that i wanted and that's the vibe i wanted her to give off of um if you know anything about freya freya is very much there's this warrior side but she's also you know beautiful and a a lover and all these other things and so i wanted to find that balance there um and yeah, it's amazingly perfect for exactly that. And so um, that's why I wanted her to have, you know, leggings or pants underneath the skirt. I didn't want just, you know, the bare, I, I've always kind of been bugged by that. I mean, I love Xena, but I've always been like, and Wonder Woman, but I've been like, geez, you know, 
you're like kicking some serious butt right now and that skirt is really short um <laughs> uh so i wanted kind of that balance and um that that's the vibe that i kind of went for of just who she we is you, we heard you fight in battle have you heard of this invention called Pants. Yes. <laughs> Leg I'm a, I mean, you know, as one who grew up um, playing outside a lot with um, mostly boys in my neighborhood, uh, I've gotten a lot of road rash in my time um, and, you know, out on the lake and up on the hills and stuff. And that hurts. So a little bit of protection on the legs, not a bad thing. Um, yeah, no. So that was, yeah. Just this yep. vibe of a balance of between the feminine and also just can still probably kick your butt. Um, I like the idea of I'm feminine and beautiful and pretty, but it's like, but could you see these guns? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. It was basically oh, kind of what vibe, I was going that's, for. That's my favorite vibe for characters. Is it's like I wear <laughs> armor everywhere, but if I'm a muscular character, you see into guns. Well, the first time <laughs> I saw like the sketch of the artwork and 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 Lore messaged me the question, I went. I was like, oh no, she's not, like, there's a balance. Like, she's fit, but it's definitely airing more on the side of there's muscle there. And then I saw the first sketch and I was just like, girl's got some guns. <laughs> and even in the legs, you see, like, these lines of muscle and you're like, okay, okay, okay. Like, that's there. Well, so. the thing I've really f Dick. struggled yeah. with in just most media culture is that being a tough girl and a feminine girl has always been separated like mm -hmm. i can like more masculine things but still be feminine yeah why do they have to be separated well it's like i have a really good friend and he he loves telling the story from years ago where we were walking into target and we were talking about like going to the shooting range or something because that's what we were talking about you know i don't know and there was a conversation, I don't know, maybe it was about Halo. It was something that involved a gun. And so we were having this full on conversation about a gun and we walked past the purse section. I went, oh, that's a cute, cute purse. And he, had to, he stopped and cracked up. He goes, there is never a moment that defines you more. And I went, what? And he goes, we were full on having a conversation about weaponry and what would be the most appropriate, and, you know, a blah, 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 and all this kind of random stuff that's very masculine normally. And then you just reference how cute a purse is. And it's you, that's you. And so, yeah, I, I, it's definitely getting better, but you know, I was very much a tomboy growing up and um, I struggle now, even today, personally with feeling attractive and pretty and dresses and things like that because I, I feel out of my own skin because I've, you know, I can't be both. And I'm realizing I'm learning more and more, and I'm yeah. 39, so I'm learning it at a very late age. I hope people learn it sooner. Um, that it's okay to be super nerdy and also, um, you know, athletic and all these other things that are often masculine named and identified, and then also enjoy. So why, does every, why does every man's deodorant have to be stuff like bear glove, <laughs> wolf thorn? You know like, what? Maybe some. But our deodorants are better. My girlfriend actually uses Old Spice because it's better deodorant. And she's like, I want to smell it like- It does, and it oh. has less chemicals in it. Have you ever looked at the ingredients of women's deodorant? It's ridiculous. They're, They're stronger. Yeah. But, uh, but everything you just pointed to with that, like the, the purse thing, just reminded me of that scene in Wonder Woman where she's walking through the city with Steve Trevor, like all, oh, like she's this baddest one, just goes, ha oh, baby, and like runs up to give it a big hug. <laughs> oh. like, and he's like, yep. no, 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 no. I think yeah. that's why I really love Wonder Woman so much is because there is that balance. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I will say for people out there who like whenever people say, oh, there's no like strong female women who are feminine and their only thing is well, Wonder Woman. It's like, well, we need more of that. We meet. But I would are... argue you've got Black Widow who is very much so once they actually start writing look for her. Um, you know, you have... Uh, you do have Sif, who does show some, if yep. you read the comics, who shows some beautiful, gentle sides. And, but also is just, I mean, every guy in that group knows she could probably take them. So, you know, um, there, there's, it's there, but again, you have to search for it. It's one of those things that Marvel actually changed that I think benefited it because in actual Norse mythology, Sif is not a battle goddess at all. No. She's just the goddess of beauty. And her, her job in actual Norse mythology, I'm Thor's wife. Yeah. I have pretty hair. 
Yeah. Well, and even, you know, Thor's mom is, has that moment of everything we see of her is this very gentle, caring mother who is the pinnacle of mother. And then in those moments where she stands up and spoiler, but I mean, the movie did spoiler but this is mythology if you don't know it um but hey i got proven that people don't know who king arthur is this week so that was interesting that, i saw um, that it hurts me so ooh, much i am writing a series that is king arthur and it just hurts my soul if oh, you don't know king wait, arthur please go find wait, I, I gave them the homework to watch any any film merlin that is king Her i don't care pick one um but yeah no i i definitely that moment where she just Maybe not the owns it. Guy Ritchie one. <laughs> Maybe what? not the one. Fair. Oh, oh I'm talking about the BBC uh, Merlin. No, no, I'm yeah. talking like she said any King Arthur movie. Oh. I'm like, I mean, I was figuring one. they wouldn't dig that deep. So we're probably okay. <laughs> Which one you find? If you Google, if you go on like a Roku and type in King Arthur, it's the first thing that pops up. Mama. Seriously? Yeah, because it's on Netflix now. So just um, be careful, because there are versions that are. Mm, even the Conan Owen one, where they like tried to play up the Roman aspect of him, is better than I that. I mean, yeah, I actually like the Keira Knightley one mm. only because. Yeah, yeah, no, um, that was a fun one. That's the same one I'm it, talking. I like that it draws. Yeah, it draws in the Celtic. But anyway, we digress. But yes, anyway, yes, yes, digress. Yeah. Yeah, we so do that a lot. We. That's, that's why. Uh, mm -hmm, we're already okay. at thirty minutes, Four. and we're <laughs> sorry, guys. We're going. We're going. Let's actually, go. since we have Dove's um, art up still, let's go ahead and maybe. You skip to that second question and then we'll go back when we switch to my character so okay. it just makes it easier on me on having okay. the switch characters okay so all right is there an item or symbol in oh. that has meaning to your character that's so in this art much. so much um yeah uh everything from um well i'm trying to remember which one which oh, you, have the, can you, you have the full us? body yes uh, so we can uh, see whatever you want us to zoom in on everything. yeah um so the marking behind her shield, um, or on the inner side of her shield, um, which was just the one minute you showed me that, I went, that's perfect, that's exactly what it is, and I was doing a horrible way of describing it, um, is uh, the symbol of uh, connected with Freya. And so um, that shield uh, was gifted to her. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, that's a big one. Um, uh, I guess... Um, you kind of can see it. Her her eye has actually a golden um, halo around it, uh, around the, the pupil. And so that's, I mean, not really, it's, it is a symbol, but it's part of who she is. Um, yeah. Uh, there are no engravings on her spear because I was not going to ask the Lord to do that business because they're so erratic and I do not know what they are. Let's just say they're on the other side. They're on the other side. They're basically things that she does, like, and I would probably have her still doing this once we start playing, is a lot of times sitting around a campfire, she is etching into her that spear, it, her runes into it, and it's just her own little um, I don't know, not nervous activity, but it's something that she does in order to something connect to it more. Hand. Yeah, and connect her more with, with it. Um, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. The armband is a symbol for uh, a connection. And so there's just a lot of a lot of what she uh, has on is connected to her backstory in some way. It's not that it's anything big. Like, I can't think of a single one that she wouldn't just explain if somebody asked her. But it's just that connection of to her past. Um, the one thing I would say, and this is not necessarily a symbol, but I think it is in, in connecting with what we were just talking about, is um, the fact that, uh, and Laura kind of did this without really me asking for it, but I really appreciate it when I saw it, I was like, yes, that's perfect, is that her uh, armor and her um, the, the neck piece and everything actually do come up higher. Um, that was something that when we talked, uh, and just about how to design the, the, uh, armor and such that she's wearing is that I, I hate the armor that looks like a woman is falling out of her armor. <laughs> that would not protect you at all. Your heart is here and your yeah. armor is here. Well, <laughs> something that drives me nuts and what I really actually very much appreciate about, uh, we're going into anime a little bit here is Fate Grand Zero. Their King Arthur is a female, but... They do the classic breastplate where it's actually pointed 
outward. And the reason they did this is so that your sword would bounce off yep. the armor and not cleave into your chest cavity. So... I think there's a dialogue conversation in Dragon Age Inquisition where Iron yep. Bull tells Cassandra that he's really happy she doesn't have the boob plate. <laughs> yep. And it was totally I never a joke. understood that. One good yeah. knock and you are dead. And then Bull's like, I know, right? And I'm not even wearing armor. <laughs> Barbarian yeah, so, fighter conversation right there. Yep. Uh, so yeah, that was that was a uh, very much a um, as much as it's not necessarily a symbol um, uh, in the art, it is a symbol to me of um, how far uh, we have come as a society of our views of women warriors and you know things like that. I, I see it less and less now of um, even if they cost you know the outfit is form fitting for you know the female which they're form fitting for the male also usually speaking um we're not seeing as many of the bikini armors and i mean if you like the bikini armor and that is what you want to do with your character do it awesome. do more it. power but to for you. me well, it movie. is a very uncomfortable a great, place to be yeah, but it's a like red sonia is a classic even though it's an awful movie it's hilarious and that is a vibe that people have with their if you want your strong female character to be like Red Sonia, more power to you. That's your thing. I like my strong male characters to look like Conan the Barbarian with no shirt, so I can't really say anything because it's kind of the same principle. Whatever <laughs> makes you yeah. feel comfortable and powerful. Yeah. yeah that's how it and, should be. Yeah, so uh, about, that is more of a, a personal symbol to me of, um, of something that I saw when I saw the art the first time. So beyond just the backstory connection, um, I mean, other than that, really, down to the colors, down to everything, it's it's kind of interesting that it it all linked back to her time in the temple, and that's just, she really hasn't taken anything from anywhere since then, but that's also kind of a commentary on maybe who she is as a person. I don't know. I, I didn't realize it until we're talking about this, and I was like... You discover yeah. things as you talk about your character. That's yeah, I was why. like, I don't know why I didn't fit some other things from other parts of the backstory in, but I just really didn't because I didn't, I don't think she, she sees a need to change anything. And that's just it's, who that's she better is. for me. I just always make it scars and like a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> you got, know. Like what I was talking to you guys about with that character. <laughs> it's like got big ass scars on its face. Yeah. Anyway, that's your turn. My what turn. Got, what was the turn. the vibe? Uh, vibe? What's the vibe? Okay, your vibe. So my vibe was unpainted ball joint doll. That's what I wanted her to look like. Um, I know that Dove hasn't seen it. Let me see no. if I can get. I don't know if I, I, I can I've get. I've seen like the very oh, loose sketch ish that you sent me at one point, but that's yeah. it. Yeah. Let me. Um. Because <laughs> all of you put your face put except for soldiers player put your face on the D, &D <laughs> pictures. So yeah it's like, that's how i first saw them before you even sent me the video and i was like oh cool uh, you were lucky you got a backstory out of me as fast as you did because i was like i really wanted to and it was not you know how a lot of times when you're writing the backstory you're struggling you need to find that thing that triggers it and i hadn't found i knew usually i write the backstory and then just side on class and race or at least start and this time i was like i knew what i wanted to play i knew why i wanted to play it and i was like God, now I gotta fit something in me, there. You heard and me then, say Norse gods and went, ooh. <laughs> yeah, and then and then Colton was like, okay, here are the gods. And he was like, yeah, Norse gods. I went, ah, okay. <laughs> I'm there. Which I'm actually okay. happy you're the only person who went like, oh, I'm sticking with the Norse gods and everyone else is like, ooh, I want to look at all these other gods from this pantheon. And I'm like, that's perfect because then we have some divert division in the party maybe because like, like I, I thought about switching over if there was one that fit better and then I had already wow. written so much that and you, we had talked about a couple things and I was like with the Northern Temple and I was like I, I love that your character is doing the Norse nope. gods because I wanted at least one player to do that and like maybe we well, at least she thinks yeah. she's with the Norse gods <laughs> she's assuming she's assuming she like assumes a lot where seen in Conan where they're comparing gods and they're like Chrome's the best and he's like my god's the sky yours is a little bitch and it's like <laughs> okay there we go. We're fixing everything now. All right. So yeah, the aesthetic I wanted was um, just. Oh, she's so cool. Not she. I wanted a character who had no color, just variations of. She's so much cooler than my ranger. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't no. draw your ranger, so. I mean, uh, no, my draw, my not the drawing. It's just, it's just, it, in and my ranger would look like look at her and go. 
Wow, you're really posh. Okay, I'm going to go over here. <laughs> I don't know if she's even really posh, though. She's, I imagine her as being not a, not childlike, but naive and um, only well, she sticking. And Dodger would just get along. And Probably. <laughs> Well, I don't know. She, because she, she was brought up by a very, I guess, posh sort of a guy. So she might have a little bit of that, but it's not a huge part of her personality. She's. I can't just... wait for her interactions with a certain other party member. Which one? Karaku. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, no. Everybody's interactions with Karaku. No, it's, it's just, just like watching a drama. It's funny because. A drama that I create by giving the world around him just being like, Hey, this thing happened. Well, being the person behind, because I've been here for all the interviews, so I, I I know what's all everybody has said. And some of the things that Rogue has said, I'm like, huh, that's going to be really interesting because of the way he views people. Like, viewers are, are already know at this point that he, he views um, people almost as, like, tools. Well, that's how she views herself. She She's a tool. That's what she was... That's kind of what for. I was talk talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. Well, because I obviously have everyone's backstories, so like, there's things that like probably came out in the interviews that I know, and I'm like, he, and I'm like, I can't wait to see. But like, that was kind of what I was going through, like the tool aspect. I'm mm -hmm. like. Ooh, he's gonna be like interesting. It's gonna be interesting how Rogue plays that because he could either be like that could either change Karaku's whole idea of what a person yeah. is, or he could really like go into that or lean into it. Um. So yeah, the vibe is just this kind of blank page, innocent. Right. And oh. then for symbols, An item or symbol. Um, so there's only really two. So because she has no color, per like I mean, aside from her fleshiness, um, she always has at least. And I didn't write this in the backstory, but I feel like this is something that would happen is that because she has the druid craft ability um she always tries to tuck flowers in her hair or in some part of Aww, her or something because she's she desperately wants color she wants to feel real and part of the world um and i and because of what she was made for i feel like she'd be reprimanded for it often not in a cruel way because i don't see her this person as being cruel they uh, i see them as having had a very sweet relationship that bothered him because of things but anyway um so the the flower is kind of just having some color for her and then another thing i didn't mention in the story her backstory was that um she has this little stone um kind of draping on her leg i was noticing that i was like okay if you're not going to talk about that i'm asking <laughs> <laughs> so uh this actually was inspired by another piece of art i saw that was totally unrelated to what i did and what the whole purpose was it was just a really cool idea um and it wasn't placed in the same place but um it's a stone in her favorite color which is a lavender stone but what this person she's been with her whole life did is that he took a piece of their sky or at least the projection of it into the stone because even though she was sent away for a very specific reason and that was not to really be able to dwell on this he wanted because she became kind of his favorite um and they did have a relationship is that he gave her a piece of their sky that would always be with her Aww. um in in the stone of her favorite color so, and then there's just really fun etchings on her bow because I didn't want a blank one. And then the moss on there is actually what has grown over the period of time from her leaving home to when she meets the party. So it can be an indication for however long she's been there. I don't know how fast moss grows. So I'll leave that up to mm -hmm. the DM because I, like I didn't spe specify how long she was away from home. From an archer standpoint, um, I love that you have a side quiver because mm -hmm. that's actually the most common. Um, and historically I, accurate. Yeah, and historically accurate. I love the back quiver because it's fun. Um, but uh, yeah, at any time I've ever, at one time that I was like, there are ones now designed specifically for that, which are the wider ones that are thinner, um, especially for horseback. Um, but uh um, the one time I, I did a competition where I I wore the quiver on my back because of having to walk through some 
heavy foliage, uh, the specific type of competition. Um, I hated my life so much. I was constantly like, cause I'm kind of, I'm not short, but I'm not tall either. And the way it was fit, I was like constantly like trying to, I ended up literally the entire time carrying one arrow in my hand against the bow and one, and, which messes up your shot. And it was just, mm-hmm. it was one of the most frustrating things. And my, my coach after the competition, she looks at me and she goes, now you see why I don't want you to wear it that way. And I went, there. <laughs> Yeah, and I I actually, ever since I read an article about how um, Hollywood has basically done the archer dirty by putting the quiver on the back, I went Mm -hmm. and I actually researched why that was, and I thought it was such a cool idea to be able to take Wolverine style, a bunch of arrows in your hand and go foop, 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 well, shoot. Yeah. So yes, and that's why it's you can that do way. the way you know, especially if you're shooting a longbow, is the way you can grip it is where the arrow is actually sticking down, mm-hmm. and so you can you know hold it that like there's so many so much exactly. more you can do when it's at your side. Yes, but aesthetically, it's fun sometimes to have it on your back. Yeah, yeah, I just like the power aspect of it being on your side. You can do way more cool things. It's it's very cool. I I like it. And then her gloves are the special thing that. Uh, allowed us all to have as our one item thing your one uncommon magic item because i have mine, had a yeah. DM. I have Mine's, had a mine before, is the like, shield so yeah. oh, i've had dms before like you guys are level eight oh cool do we get it no basic starting equipment i'm like we're level eight yeah yeah it, that's like, frustrating I'm, and i told a dm once i'm like i'm literally just gonna take a great axe plus one what's the big deal and he was like no and i was like my DM ended up being a very railroady DM, and also a very, uh, mm, you can roll for that, uh, <laughs> 19 plus 4, 22, or 23? Oh, uh, yeah, it doesn't work. I'm like, 23 doesn't work? Sometimes I feel like if, I don't know, that's that one is a, definitely a DM call, but also, DMs need to let us have our fun, man. I it's a balance. It's definitely yeah. a balance. Guy, but like, certain things like if someone's like i want to flirt with the goddess Freya, okay well, <laughs> i will the nat 20 on my persuasion cool 20 plus what yeah plus seven? 27 ooh, you needed a 53 to do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Fair. that's yeah 100 like, percent. that's why i don't do nat 20s and nat ones on skill checks because it's more yeah. fun that way because if you have a plus 20 overall to your like to a sleight of hand or something and you roll a one, that's not an automatic failure if it's a 21. Like, come on, guys. There's one There's more thing. Bonus. There's I one want, more. One thing I want to point out is that her eyes are kind of that blind cloudiness because, again, she's not colored in. So it's, it's not because she has any eyesight problem or whatever. It is strictly because she's lacking color. That'd be hard so. as an archer. Yes. <laughs> Anyway, we're already at like almost 45 minutes and we still have, we don't have to answer all of the D12 questions, but it's fun to get to as many as we can. So game time, D12. Should I just roll and ask both of you the question? Or should I individually ask questions based on the die roll? I think we all take turns taking the roll and then Cole can read them out. Okay. I should go first. Okie dokie. That is a, a six. What is what is your character's biggest pet peeve? <laughs> this is one of the fun someone and like yeah, does I was she like, have I a pet peeve? Don't know what she's gonna... Hey, you're developing your character. <laughs> well the problem is is that my character's only been in a single environment for her whole life, which has not been long despite how she looks. But- Ironically, same with my character until like, you know, a couple years ago and even that was another single environment basically. And she's only uh, ever interacted with one person her whole life. So it's like Would something like videos be like someone like purposely like not caring for flowers as they walk through them or something? No, I don't think she knows any better. She doesn't know anything about flowers, just that she can grow them. So if someone stepped on it, she well, I don't know. She's actually has a very high intelligence. But I don't know if that would bother her. I have a friend playing a half-orc barbarian who's a vegan barbarian, and her character, his name is Roto, and he refuses to kill any animals, so he won't rage in combat if they're fighting animals. 
because I said you can't do non-lethal damage if you rage. So he, he'll constantly, like, someone's like, I'm going to attack the wolf. He'll yell, non-lethal! <laughs> little animals to get hurt. That's right, amazing. So no pet peeves for Vidya, huh? She will probably develop a pet peeve as the campaign progresses, I would think. Okay, what about Karina? Oh, uh, gosh, um, you know, actually, I mean, sure, uh, probably if you, if you touch her armor or her shield or her spear, any of her, um, yeah, that kind of stuff, that would probably upset her pretty big, um, especially now, uh, it, it's very peculiar that she, the more I realize she hasn't changed any of that stuff since she left, I, I think that's become, um, for that reason, and then also for, the, you know, the runes and such, like, I think that would be a, you know, even if it was meant of, oh, I was going to clean them for you, um, I think that it would just be like, don't touch my stuff. <laughs> don't touch my stuff. I, ha I have a feeling that I don't think she'd be mean about it, but there's also this, um, you know, a little bit of, you know, background and which, who, yeah, I, I think there'd be a little bit of that protective stuff. Protectiveness over I things have that. I notes uh, now, Karina, don't, all caps, in all caps, don't touch my stuff. <laughs> Again, I don't know if she'd be mean about it necessarily or that, I mean, maybe eventually, but be, you That's know. Like a, like a mom being like, don't touch that <laughs> well it, you know it's like if you have siblings and you've grown up with siblings who are close in age especially if they're close in age to you um and you have your your things and you're like but and, and yeah sure maybe they're not in the way that that person would even even if they're not trying to use them they're just like you know move them somewhere and then you're you know you're trying to get somewhere and you can't find them because well i put it away where'd you put it away well where it belongs where is that you know so i, I think yeah I, I i'll go with that i think she has this you know mentality of um you know i i, I please don't touch my stuff you know and, and yes there is the please there um because i think that her manners were very much put on her and she was very well trained in that kind of you know she's not gonna scream at you at least not yet but <laughs> eventually maybe i don't know but uh at least at first it would be very much of this is mine it's mine um this, again especially if you've grown up with siblings you know what's mine is yours no this one's mine <laughs> yep exactly i'm, I'm gonna go uh, with that sure already <laughs> that. dev you want to roll the next die Oh. And you're lucky you said that. I was about to make you roll. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm I just I roll, I roll oh. a six, so I will roll again. Uh, one. Hey, what do they like doing in their spare time? Vidya zero three nine gray is a huge reader. She okay. likes reading fiction. She likes reading to learn. She. If she's not training or um, assigned uh, something to do, she will probably go straight for a book. That is awesome. I like that a lot as a bookworm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I ironically, I was going to go kind of similar with that, I, uh, but I will go different now. Um, <laughs> you can still have the no, same it's, one. It's, it's something I build into all of my characters because of who I am as a note taker. And um, I find the few characters I haven't built that into, I struggle to take the notes like I like to. Um, I have friends who joke I am Marisha Ray, <laughs> reference from uh, Critical Role. Uh -huh. uh, I am Laura Bailey's mentality half the time because I'm a perpetual middle schooler, but I am a note taker like Marisha Ray uh, to the extreme. And so um, I, I, it's how I stay focused. And so a lot of times I build into my characters that they have a notebook or something um, because it helps me as a, per as a player kind of make that connection and be okay with it. Um, so probably i mean that could even be to you know when she's carving on her on her spear that is her version of kind of taking notes because it's usually connected to something that's occurred um she probably would be right there with your character <laughs> sitting there you know there's is actually that one a couple, trade? A couple um, of a couple of other characters 
are bookworms. So I'm I feel like we're just gonna have a book club. Our whole campaign. We're um, called the book clubbers. I, I would I would actually say you know I I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I'll go with it. Um, she Definitely. likes to sketch and take notes in a, in a book of where she's going and where she's been. Like um and to keep memory of it so that she can share if she ever when if she ever gets to go home and um and so it's kind of one of those things of she went out into the world and so um yeah probably that you know if she isn't carving into her you know and again that's part of this carving into the spear that's part of the spar you know she spars uh, she's she she's putting caveman stories on her spear oh sure i mean i like yeah. that idea that that so be, she's carving yeah. her carving her story into her spear and you know it I, I think she probably would have a book that she does it too of just but the spear is definitely maybe she plans it on the book and then you know yes. does the portions that are you know yeah there's only so much space on there's only so much space yeah. on the spear uh, yeah. <laughs> the half of the at spear least one time um, i'm gonna get you mentioned sparring i'm gonna have at least one time be like all right pick your sparring partner from the party and make you role play like uh, like non-lethal combat <laughs> <laughs> I was thought you were gonna say, oh, wait till you, you know, that spear gets broken, or you get a new one. Like it's one of those things of I, I think even if like for example, oh, spear... I mean, the way I would do that is like you just upgrade your current weapon. Like if it's a sentimental one, we'll just say that you upgrade your new your sentimental yeah. spear to Cause, the new level. Because there's really nothing special about the spear as far as usage. It's just you know she's done this, but she also could break the tip off and mail it. You know, get it sent back home or something. Like, I don't know. Here's my story. Out. Keep it safe for me, please, please. Um. So yeah, yeah. Probably recording um where she's been and what she's done and what she's seen. Both. You know. That I think that's way. cool. If Mother I sent you a book in the in the the if book is coming to you, this is a stick. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Um, no, Your journals honestly, are sticks. Honestly, I'm gonna be real honest. Her mother probably would have loved had she gone more of a scholar route. Like that would have been probably a, a pretty uh, an okay choice. Everybody oh. disappointing their parents. You know, I, I don't know if she disappointed us. <gasps> no, she's totally disappointed. Um, <laughs> I mean, Alrighty. yeah. Okay, let's go to the next question. Yeah, yeah. Question. It's your turn to roll, Lore. Nine. Your turn. Nine. How did they get, they get started with their chosen class? How did they get started in their chosen class? Um, Vidya didn't choose hers. So, like, that's the, immediately when she opened her eyes, that was what she started doing. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, Wake up. I'm good with Bo. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a training process, but she, um, I will say that she was designed specifically, she, like having gone through so many versions of her, she was designed specifically her body type to be good with a bow and to be good at what she was made for. So. Alrighty. Yeah. How about you, Dove? How did Karina become what she is? Uh, she, I, I, in my estimation of what I made up in my own head about the Temple of the Northern Gods, every child who grows up there is trained in combat to a certain extent because that's just what you do. Um, and she kind of took to um, the 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 fighting style of, you know, with the shield and the spear and, and she can use other weapons. Um, but that was more her flavor of what she enjoyed. And, um, and so then that was never necessarily going to be who she met. Like, I didn't, I don't think it, uh, until certain events occurred, I don't think she realizes that she realized that was the path she was going to take was to become um, a fighter. And then, as far as uh, uh, subclass situations of that was a complete woke up and went, oh, I can do this. <laughs> so uh, it, that was a surprise, and um, that is something that uh, when I wrote into the backstory, I actually kind of went. I don't know if Colton's gonna like this. I don't know. If this, could, this could have to be trained. I don't know. I don't know enough about this. And then all I got back from him was, "Looks good." <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, no. Uh, the 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 runic abilities are 
kind of relatively new and um she thinks they're gifts from the gods i'll just be honest she and she assumes certain things and i have no idea where they come from so i don't as a player i am even owning that as a player uh so yeah that's that's kind of weird yeah. that kind of came from that was one of the things I don't. Okay, we're gonna have a guest for a little while because she is being on. Oh, baby, so cute. Cuddles. This is Yasha. Yasha will be our guest for the rest of the day. Say hello. <laughs> Hi, baby. So cute. Okay, okay. Cole. Okay. Go. It's your turn to roll. Your turn. It's my turn to roll. Your turn. Uh, Scott. That is a tree. So, how would someone get their special attention? <laughs> <laughs> This was so funny on the other interviews because it's for everyone. The only person who, because it was meant to be openly interpreted Ooh. as to what special attention meant, and Rogue's the only one who took it in a different direction than everybody else so far. It was really, oh no, it wasn't Rogue, it was Tarvel. Tarvel took Tarvel. it in a different direction. It was so special funny. Special attention? You mean like buddies? <laughs> I think it was, he just kind of interpreted it as someone who would like, he would have an interest with is kind of more of a, a platonic interest everybody else obviously went the romantic side so how to answer this question now are you eating me do you have any ideas dove uh sort of okay then you can go first because i have been thinking uh, about this and i really don't know how to answer okay uh I almost jokingly took it a different direction but I chose not to. Um, uh, probably prove themselves both as um, a, not necessarily a warrior, but good at what they do. Like co the confidence that comes with knowing you're good at something. And um, it's not prideful necessarily. It's just like that would not be attractive to her at all. Uh, it's it's that um, it, it's that confidence that you see in people when I, I'm gonna be real honest I, I rim Ferris and stuff when I wear Vex I bleed confidence and I have a lot of people tell me I show it very frequently like in a lot of I I am the most non-confident person 99.9% .9 of the time inside my head um, except you know but at rim fair when I'm Vex or when I'm Bo everything once i get there and i get past that initial am i gonna look dumb am i gonna look dumb? there is nothing but because i'm that character and, there, and it's that kind of um it, it, it's just that confidence that is represented so i think that that would be a big part of it um and it doesn't have to be as a fighter or as a warrior or it, it, whatever they are good at they know they're good at it and there's that balance of confidence with humility. And and you know what that means. When you see it in a person, you know. Um, and the other thing is probably um, giving her actually the extra attention because she's very used to, um, I don't know why I've been skating around this. Uh, I said it because I, I linked this to my twin nephews. She has a twin sister. And so like, um, I don't know why I like didn't even, I started to say it and then I saw Colton kind of tilt his head and then I second guessed myself if I should say it. I was like, she would be honest about that from If I tilt my head, I'm probably, one. I'm probably just like, hmm, that's interesting. But like, yeah. it's not gonna <laughs> it was be- It one of those ones I started, that. like I lost my confidence. We'll see um, go, mm, if I'm like, mm, don't say she that. Is, she is not, she's not high. She would never hide that. Like if, if yeah, that's, anything that's came up, reveal. no, it's not a big reveal. Um, so she, I, I think in my mind, she's used to her, um, her twin being, uh, kind of the one that was more, Soft the, 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 the boys look, you know, looked at and, um, uh, or, you know, everyone did. Um, and so it wasn't that she was less, it was just, um, her, you know, and she adores her sister. And it's, there's not that, comp it's not a competition necessarily between them, but it was when someone finally did pay that kind of attention to her and things were going that way. And then all of a sudden she went, whoa, pump the brakes. I don't know if I want this, you know, kind of thing. And so I think that she's just not used to that kind of attention being paid to her almost at all. So yeah, it's a blending of those two things would probably, so one is like, you know, anyone, a bard walks up to talk to her kindly, and she'd probably be like, does he like me? <laughs> um, 
but then at the same time, um, she's she. Th there may be some issues with the bard. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a, like a tournament fighting episode, and Trina's just gonna be like, Hi. yeah. <laughs> but I think there's definitely yeah yeah. It's kind of, and the rest I don't know. I mean, she's she is relatively young. She's and young out in the world. So, um, you know, as much as you say your character is kind of so new she has kind of led a certain amount of a sheltered life up until just you know the last few years or so so um yeah it, it's not that she's against it it's just she's just like not used to that kind of attention ever being put to her so that coupled with other things that might be attractive to her which i have not discovered yet we'll, we'll find out <laughs> good luck <laughs> Um, okay, so I think with Vidya, it would be that she would expect to be wooed the way she's read in her books, um, because she doesn't realize that's not real life, per se. Um, she was always discouraged, I feel like, from those frivolous, uh, you know, stories and whatnot, but uh, to some degree she recognizes it as not how things would really actually go but I think what would really get her is someone who treats her as a person and um and goes beyond her being usable in whatever form they see her useful as so it would be just genuine interest in who she is as a person not a tool being too much of a butt Oh, little one. But yeah, that's my answer. I like it. Well, is it your is turn? Good. Yours? It, Fine. It's Dove's turn to roll. Okay, I couldn't remember what order we went in, so. Ah, stay in the pool. Because Dad's making you sit up here. Um, <laughs> no, we answered that one. Sorry. I'm trying to remember which ones we did. Oh, two. <laughs> single. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Only that would you count. Roll again. <laughs> I mean, everybody is mostly single. There's a couple who are like, eh. uh, what in the world? Twelve. What okay. kind of mayor would your character be? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, uh, yeah. Do something. Kill him. No. <laughs> um, I, 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 I don't. I don't know if she knows what a mayor is. Like, I guess she would. She's not dumb, but that's not, I guess. I mean, she'd get it if you gave her, like, it's the word that I think she'd be like, wait, what? Um, no, nah, she probably did from her tra travels. Yeah, I don't, I don't think she'd be real great. She'd be great at being the mayor's second in command and, you know, carrying out whatever needs to be taken care of. But I, I don't. I think she'd hate it too. Like that is actually much more her sister's role. Like that is like, I am not it, you know? Um, and it's not an intelligence thing. It's just a, that's not the type of responsibility. And who knows that may change. That's always the fun of a campaign of you create characters in a certain way and then you start playing with everybody and things tweak. So, but yeah, right now I don't, a very incompetent and uncomfortable would be looking for someone else to take the job. <laughs> uh, because of Vidya's upbringing and her, like, why she uh, was uh, the whole purpose of her being her, I think she would actually take it very seriously. And she would surround herself with the people who could best help her in doing the best job she could with the mindset of what's best for the people and whatever economical, agricultural uh, means, and she, she she would really try to make sure that whoever or whatever she was over would thrive. So, yeah, she would take it very seriously. Well, that is good to know. <laughs> Not that she would I'm necessarily... Gonna make, I'm going to make Karina the mayor of so many <laughs> See, with Vidya, she took a very, like, a, a hit in her confidence when she failed her thing. Um, but she does have the background training for those certain things. Mm -hmm. So, 
for her, she would she would probably be out to prove herself. Yeah, I would agree. I think in some ways Karina would feel the same, but also I think she's just convinced herself that it's not a role she should be in. And so it's like, okay, I will do this until you find the person who should be doing it. Right. Um, but it, it's not a lack of, but yeah, definitely not her, her area that she thinks she would excel at necessarily or even want to be in. <laughs> All right. Uh, Let's see. Eleven. Oh, there you go. Your PC has been given a kangaroo. They can't give it away or sell it. What would they do with the kangaroo? Oh, that is Karina's best friend now. Like <laughs> that is easily just. The... Come on, buddy. Let's go. <laughs> the, uh... She would train that thing to fight. Um, she would get it a outfit, at least a cloak or something, and maybe even armor. And it would, it would be a kangaroo version of her. Like that is hands down would be her bestest boy. Knowing. <laughs> Not let Karina adopt any kobolds. <laughs> Probably not a good idea. <laughs> I just like, I just have that like image of the uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Only had Arlo for a day and a half. But if anything happened to it, I'd in this room and then myself. <laughs> that, that is where that is where this boy, this is the bestest owl boy, bear boy. And, you know, DMs keep giving my groups animals or something of the equivalent. And we keep going, this is a bad idea because we will burn down your entire campaign to save that small creature. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't throw anything cute at you guys. <laughs> cute people, I guess. I'll mm. throw the cute people at you. There's there's a specific player who's like, oh man, I need a pet. <laughs> she was she's determined to find a pet. I'll let you watch the whole thing so you can find out who it is. I'll be honest, I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past Karina to potentially be that go person. after some going after something or I'd be like, okay, it's ours now. We we will co-parent this pet. Right, right. <laughs> animals at you, I may not, but in, I feel like you two after the story I told about the other game idea, I'm like, y'all are gonna be hesitant over any attractive person I throw at you. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. Because yeah, we'll there's really, I don't, like, who from my backstory can you really hurt me with? I don't know how don't, creative don't you're going to Don't invite that. Don't, don't throw, answer the question. It's your okay, okay. What are you knowing, do with this knowing <laughs> how swole a kangaroo can get, because have you seen pictures of these kangaroos? Yeah, she'd be 100% turning this kangaroo into a party, a fighting party member. Yes. 100%. So, so we're in agreement here. Yes. Is, we're, is, okay. Vidya and Karina are on the same page. I am I am determined to find a way to arm one of the creatures in, in <laughs> one of our groups. Like, I have been trying to teach a baby owlbear how to use a dagger and a hand axe, okay? Like, this is full on a possibility. I love it. <laughs> Colton's so like, much. oh no, but also. <laughs> okay, but can you imagine how much fun? How much fun? I don't need to. I already have a campaign that's got a pet kobold that's a monk. It's true. It's true. All we're asking is for a kangaroo. Kangaroo's and the other group is asking for a crocodile. And the other group is asking for an elephant. Because those were the different animals. We oh, all had elephant. different animals. Oh my goodness, we would make a moving house on that elephant. No, 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 I will say that I do have creatures, homebrew creatures, that don't exist in the 5e world. So you might come across something interesting that y'all are like, Hey. Hmm. All right. all right, how are we doing? Um, we're actually doing pretty good. We might get to all these questions. We'll all see. Right. We have a Hold. little less than a half an hour. Oh, uh, Laura, you're up. I, no, Laura, just that went. was me. Oh, that's me. I she rolled a D11. It's my turn to roll. Five. How has their upbringing affected their worldview? <laughs> oh, Oh, I actually kind of uh, put that one in there, fired. knowing what little I do about Karina. I kind of put that one. That in is there not fair. Right I can't reveal my whole backstory <laughs> right just, here. Just you know, videos like uh, guy ev ev everything. Um, everything about her upbringing informs her her current worldview. Um, yeah, no, like I said, um, she uh, was raised as a follower of Freya. Um, raised in the temple and um, Colton and I when we talked about what was this temple like it, it, ha it is to all the Norse gods and so in my mind that's a training place that's a home that's a 
a lot of things. Um, so she was raised with, you know, honestly, at one point I got a little bit in my head of like, this is basically Camp Half-Blood, but with a few extra adults. Um, <laughs> Cause I even wrote in my backstory, like antics that she and her sister got up to. I was like, okay, a few of these examples. Um, oh, I did that and, for and I, and I, I really truly feel that I will probably come up with others as we um, play that, you know, I might spout out with something as we play that I will make up in the moment, you know, of something that they, she or they did as, um, as kids growing up in this, you know, place. And so, um, I mean, this is a place of heroes. This is a place of, 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 you know, paladins, of clerics, of, of fighters, of barbarians, of, you know, if you look at the Norse gods, they are as diverse as the world. And so um, I wanted to play with that a lot. And so I think that's where like a lot of her acceptance probably comes from. Um, she's very accepting of lifestyles and who people are and kind of takes them, I think a bit at face value, which could make her a little bit gullible at times. Um, I don't imagine her being terribly suspicious. Um, not that she won't insight roll somebody, but it will, it will be more of a um, and maybe that'll change as I, I don't know in my mindset of her right now. Um, that's very much comes from uh, growing up there and thinking that's where she was going to spend a bulk of her life, if not if not there, going out to do things for the temple. And when that didn't happen, and she and, and things happened that caused her to leave, it it um, much like Laura said earlier, it, it, she it, it definitely. A hit to her confidence um uh and that can come out more in character but um very much a uh a, a, a big part of who she is and how she views the world because she grew up in a place that everyone was so different um and yet so similar too so there's this um kind of attitude I think that's also why she's probably as hardworking as she is. That's, you know, there's a lot of other things that come with, um, you know, where her love of storytelling comes from, where her, you know, or remembering what has occurred because she heard these legends all growing up. And so even though she doesn't, you know, who knows, she may never be one, but, you know, I gotta have something to show for what I've been doing with myself, you know, kind of thing. And so I think there's a little bit of that, um, <clears throat> but yeah. Nope. Yeah. Cool. And I probably have given more of my backstory away than anyone else in this group, and that is not fair. Uh, you better all start talking. Vinny doesn't have much of a backstory. I was, I was like, whenever I was like, oh, it's gonna be us three. I was like, these are the two characters who have like one who is like, my backstory is four sentences, and the other one's like, here's my four pages. Uh, I'll say this. You, I warned complaining. you about like that it. long before we <laughs> ever talked about playing in a campaign. I was like, I, like I am the, the DM. I the do. joke is, who writes the longest backstories? I was expecting her to Amanda. give me one. I was expecting uh, I did too. to give me one too. And oh no, like, usually, oh. usually my, my backstories are pages and pages and pages. Oh, yeah. And if the DM asks for more, it will double. I, like I, like I said, I wanted a character who wasn't affected by her past. For the most part. <clears throat> like, I'll say this. Vinny is only seven months old. So. And then your backup character is going to have, like, the most extensive. <laughs> yeah, so don't kill her off. <laughs> I don't plan on it. <laughs> um, let's see. What was the question? The question uh, is, uh, how has the upbringing affected oh, the right. world? So yeah, I, I would think your upbringing has affected some kind of worldview. A little bit. She has um, very much a misconception on how people view each other because of the way she was viewed. Um, like, she experienced reluctant affection. Like, there was a hesitancy. Um, this person did not want to be emotional, and they were surprised by how they felt for Vidya because she was, at this point, the most complex and um, alive version of what had been done. And um, so, but, but the way she was treated, it was all about um, training, purpose, 
what you are made for. So she is under the impression that everybody has a reason for being and that they know what it is and that they have, um, you know, their set of commands. But at this point, she's lost all of that. So, yeah, for her, it's kind of, she, she doesn't know what to expect. Because even with her books, she understands what fiction means. She understands that it's imaginative. She, like I said, she has a high intelligence, average wisdom. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a little interesting. It's the opposite of all my barbarians. High wisdom. <laughs> intelligence is, it's, it's like a 10. <laughs> all right, whose turn is it? It is wow. your turn. No, it's Dove's it? turn. Yeah, eight? Yes, yes. Did we already do eight? eight? Where would they like to visit? Oh. <sighs> Our pockets. Our I pockets. imagine that Vidya wants to visit somewhere she... That is the equivalent of the most fantastical thing she's read in her books. With the awareness that it might not actually... That she might not actually ever find this place. Uh, gosh. Karina probably just wants to, at this point, just continue, just see the world, just see, um, yeah, just see as much as she can for now. Um, I don't know that she has anywhere specific she wants to visit, per se. Um, at least nothing that I know of the world so far has been made me go, okay, she wants to go there, you know? Um, just because I don't, I think she, she's spent so much time just any knowledge she has of the world is either in stories or in, um, with the oral traditions and such, um, back from the temple or looking at maps. And so I'm sure she and her sister were like, yeah, and we'll go here and we'll go here, you know, things like that. But I don't know that she knows a lot about like what specific cities or what the mountain means or, you know, anything like that. So yeah, probably just. Yeah, kind of boring that way. I just want to see the world. Video um, wants to see a floating island that is the most colorful with all of the most fantastical. She essentially wants to go to some equivalent of the Feywild, not knowing that it's the Feywild. You and, you know, have you not learned your lesson yet? <laughs> For which character? <laughs> She's not actually not actual Literally. Feywild. She wants to go to like a safe version of the Feywild. I am Feywild. imagining Feywild like, <laughs> but yes, Feywild like Feywild floating <laughs> island with waterfalls and rainbows and fluffy clouds and the equivalent of 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 a unicorn of unicorns like most oh, colorful, Feywild. most fantastical. What she read Feywild. in her book about this high, high, high fantasy, like even beyond the fantasy of Dungeons and Dragons, that's Feywild. where she wants to go. She wants to find a place as close to that as she can. Because of color. She's obsessed with the color. She wants to find the most colorful she, uh, place she can. Just, you know, she wasn't like fighting or anything. She was just giving her opinions about your backstory. Yeah. <laughs> very I expect all the opinions from a puppers. Yeah, she has. She's a loudmouth pupper too. <laughs> uh, like her brother, who never makes noise. <laughs> You're being uh, ornery. You on camera, and then you went. I'm gonna be ornery. <laughs> uh, Is it my do turn? we have any more? I think so. We have a couple. Okay. A couple See left. what happens. Five. We already did five. Okay. I mean, at this point, should we just like find the ones that? Because I think we we been... haven't done. Uh, they have a rival. Four. Oh. Do they? Well, I'll just roll until I get a four. There's four, three. seven. We haven't done seven either. Uh, four or seven or ten. Yeah. I'm not rolling any of those, so let's just go. Oh, look, a seven. Hey, seven. there you go. Okay, there we go. What's their annoying habits? Oh, oh, I know this one because I already thought about this. Okay. Is it barking all the time? No, she's gonna leave that to to Yasha. <laughs> Um, hers is actually, she will intensely stare at people because oh. she spent her whole life not speaking with her mouth for the most part. Very rarely was she ever communicating verbally. It was all telepathically. 
And so she's staring at somebody. She's wondering why they're not answering back. Should have done a Kelsar. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> In your head. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because the person who, who trained her and took care of her was a Kalistar. And he did not want, he didn't like speaking. He only communed telepathically with her. And so she thinks everybody can do it. Or at least that she has some ability to at least, you know, have that sort of thing. It might not be that she so much believes everybody can. She just expects it because that's what she's used to. Because, like, she's not stupid. She knows that not everybody can speak with their heads. So, but that would probably be her annoying habit is that she's just going to forget that people don't talk that way. And she's just going to stare at you. I'm like, <laughs> hello, why aren't you answering me? I have a question. I have made a comment about how cool you look. And, you know, it doesn't get an answer. Video meets the party. She's just going to stare. <laughs> I mean. Okay, okay Cedric. <laughs> 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 nah, she doesn't have that bug eyed look. <laughs> um, for uh, Korea, yeah, it's um, and this one is a credit to my nephews, uh, um, because they used to do this. She will s not intentionally where others can necessarily hear her, but she will do like this little bit of a made up language that she will just kind of use, um when she's talking to herself, it's never directed at someone, but she will like be sitting there, you know, writing down things uh, in the notebook or, or, you know, carving them into the sphere. And she will be, you know, um, making little sounds and they are completely not even anything. Uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes it sounds like it's kind of, you know, musically sounding. And sometimes it's just weird kind of, what did you say, you know? Um, but it's literally just kind of a made up language that basically she and her sister have used from childhood and they, she's used to her sister just knowing what she meant. And she always knew what her sister, sister meant. It's not like they would have a full on conversation. It was never used that way, but it was like, you know, you know, but I'm good, you know, and it's like this really just, there's not actually words involved. It's just these sounds that, but because they knew, you know, that whole twin connection, they knew what the other was trying to convey, and so, so yeah, that's, much. but to s someone on the outside, that probably could be very that's annoying. That's gonna be awesome. I, I don't know how that will come out, or how it will be at all in-game, but uh, like I said, it's not something she would ever do directed at someone else, at least not in my mindset right now. Maybe if she got frustrated and frazzled enough, she'd like, <laughs> you know, kind of thing, and that would be part of it. I don't know. But yeah, like just on her own. So we both just... have communication handicaps. Uh, apparently, yeah. <laughs> um, or, or extra skills that, you know, nobody seems to know or recognize. Yes. Whoa. All right. I already rolled and I got a four after like seven tries. Oh, hey. So do they have a rival? Uh... <laughs> Her sister <laughs> I, I mean i guess her sister to a certain extent but i don't know i mean i i think they were probably compared a lot but um karina is very very dedicated to her sister um part of the choices she has made is to open doors for her sister and get out of the way and so it, it it's not um like even you know like her her shield is from her sister so it, it, it it's not a um so is the arm man um so i i mean there's still this very strong connection from them and it's not a necessarily competition per se for her so i get that they are potentially rivals and that's a given with siblings period uh to a certain extent um i don't know that she sees it that way uh i mean that could change i don't know i don't know what's going to happen um I think there was probably other kids growing up that she saw as kind of rivals and then things shifted. But um, probably, I guess, the only one right now would be her sister and even that. I don't think she sees it that way, necessarily. Um, paths have been laid out before them by the gods and they are taking the paths as best they can. And so, uh, who knows? That could change depending on 
what happens in story. But as of right now, I don't I don't know that she sees it that way. Hmm. Okay. What about Vidya? How many rivals does she have? Well, technically, thirty-eight. <laughs> Well, that makes sense. Thirty nine <laughs> <laughs> plus another one, because she. I, but I mean, none of them are functioning, so they're not actual rivals. Um, so I think I don't know. Well, I don't know. I guess I mean I said they all went there to die, but whether the DM permadeaths them, I don't know. I don't know what you're gonna do. Well, that was your thing. Um, so potentially thirty nine. <laughs> Oh, I mean 38, but technically 39 because she is aware that because she was a failure and she was sent to the same place all the others were, that um, there is another, potentially another version of her walking around. And I don't know if she would see them as a rival because in her mind, she failed. So she's no longer in the running for See, Karina whatever. sees that and she goes, wait, you're a twin too? <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I don't think I put this in, but in my mind, her, she and her twin are basically identical. Like, they are, I don't think I even wrote that, but in my mind, I, that's what I, except for probably one very distinguishing factor. Uh, maybe not the same in build anymore, but definitely, like, what they, they were, mm -hmm. you know, identical. And so, uh, they totally pulled those pranks on the teachers. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm Karina. She, you know, <laughs> But, but they, you know, Fred and George maybe He's a little bit. He's not Fred, I am. Right? <laughs> exactly. I, I, I feel like at least when they were young, young. So I just, I, I think that would be hilarious. Like, we're going to be, Dubai. start talking, wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, the this only will, member of the group that would just be like, all right. This will <laughs> probably come out very quickly when, depending on Cole, if Cole goes the route he had mentioned about bringing Vidya into the mix. So, I don't know what's going to happen, but it will probably come to light very quickly about all of that. So, but yeah, she technically, I, I guess, would have a rival, but she's already taken herself out of the race, so. All righty, and the final question we have, what's the most interesting thing they've read or seen? Stop biting my feet. Red or C, red or C. You know, I wrote these questions and you would think that I would have you thought think. about them. Um, red or C. Ah, oh, gosh. Uh, probably seen was was her oath, was the oath taking for which nobody's going to know what that is, but eventually you probably, maybe we'll find out. Uh, but yeah, the oath-taking ceremony was probably one of the most insane and interesting things because of what went down during it. Um, yeah, I think. She agrees. <laughs> Thank you, Yasha. <laughs> and yaps here and there. I can't control it. She's a baby. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> this is a casual. You fun are you are lucky interview. you do not have a cat yowling at you right now, but she is passed out over in front of us oh, in the sun girl. Really like rub my belly with your foot, Dad. <laughs> and uh, I'm doing that just to keep her quiet. But anyway, all right. The things we do. What about, what about Vidya? So for Vidya, I think for her. Originally, the most fascinating thing she would have seen was the sky outside of this giant place that she spent her life in looking out. I imagine that there would have been these big glass ceilings and things and the sky is different than what she's read of in books. And so for her, that would probably be one of the most fascinating things because what she sees and what she knows is out there don't correlate and she doesn't know why it is that way. Um, and then once she leaves, I guess that every day it's going to be different because she'll, she was trapped in the same, well, not trapped. She was, she was content, but she, um, was used to just one thing. So every time she sees something new, it will be that new, most interesting thing. And then for reading wise, it would be that place that she's trying to find the equivalent of in real life. Okay. Floating magical island. Floating magical island. <laughs> I mean, that sounds oh, like a pretty fascinating place. I'll, I'll like, give a little bit of a world reveal. There is a floating island. 
We have to find the floating island. And I feel like because- I, I gotta be honest, Karina, Karina would be all about going there with Vidya. She'd be like, this yeah, is, sure, let's do it. So the funny thing is it hovers very closely to the continent that you guys are on of Rivera. It's very nearby, but it's not technically part of the continent of Rivera. But it's there and it's pretty much always within view. So I'm sure Vidya would be like, there. I want How do we get there. up there? <laughs> Oh, don't worry, I have plans for that. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, I'm excited. What you guys do? It'll be fun. Video's not like my that is. Lore's just sitting there like a video will, will completely do anything possible to go to that island. She's expecting giant, beautiful, colorful flowers, unicorns, turns out rainbows, really waterfalls. Place. It turns right. out you get up there and the first thing you see is like another mind players. <laughs> of course. <sighs> of course. Um, right. did we answer all the questions in that? Is every we question. Did. Cool. Okay. So now what we're going to do, because this is the last PC art reveal interview question thing, is we're going to share our new opening for Chronicles of Revere. So uh, Dove has not seen yet. Which Dove has no. not yet seen. So here we go. It took me okay. way too long to make that. Oh, I think no, that's why every time I felt bad, I was like, oh no, she's pulled my name wrong. Oh, no, no, no. That thing wasn't too hard to fix. It was more of teaching myself how to do all of it. All the different layers and stuff, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What what video editing program did she Hit use? Film Express. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so cool. I now think uh, now think about it, I'm going to consider it kind of an inside joke that the my dungeon master name pops up a over and under a piece of breastplate. Oh. <laughs> like the armor that Colton would the never chest. wear. And I love that it's just the chest. It is, like, it was just, just right the chest. Here. Like, that is exactly how it. do you describe your DM Colt Wolfrun? Man, chest. <laughs> that, that is him. Literally. Yeah, before we started recording and we were talking about how to include the dungeon master into that, it was because of your TikTok. We just joked it was the chest. Just snap like it. it in there. And I had, I had done that breastplate. So anyway, okay. Well, I wanted to ask one more thing because Dove and I are both in Aether Realms playing other characters. So with that in light, we are the only two. So how is your, how is Karina different from Lorna? Oh gosh. Um, Kind of funny because they are they seem like they could be similar but they're really not um i think uh personality wise i think that they for the most part are probably going to be quite a bit different um uh like i said karina is much more uh i don't want to say naive but maybe a little bit uh, to a certain extent i think she takes people at their face value um 
which uh, I, I kind of had an in, inner joke where I thought, I was like, I'm pretty sure the Loki, like the quote unquote Loki kids, like totally mess with her a lot. <laughs> um, and, but then she started figuring out how to, how, how to play back. And so she never saw it as malicious necessarily. It was just always a game. Um, whereas I think, um, and uh, Lorna is very um, steeped in tradition and steeped, but is a responsibility of tradition. Um, uh, and I've, I've alluded to this a lot as Lorna. I don't know if it's been openly said, um, but in Lorna's mind, she ran away from her responsibilities. Um, she, uh, like, it, there's been enough conversations with different characters where, if, I, I mean, if you've watched the episodes, you have seen, um, she very much knows that she left and, and she felt that that would make people happy. At least she tells herself that. Um, and some of it was a choice for herself, but some of it I think was also truly, um, she, I think has actually made the comment. I took the coward's way out and um, very much strives not to. And so when she switches into that mode of what she was, her upbringing, that's why um, I had her in one of, in a couple of our sessions, she didn't eat until she got the group back because that was her way of punishing herself in certain aspects to knowing I had a job to do and I failed and I'm not gonna fail it all the way. I can get these people. And, and it, it was that way to keep herself accountable. I, I don't punish herself might be a little harsh um and and i'm talking more about lorna because i play her and i have been playing her for basically a, a year now and so I, I feel i know her a lot better than i probably do know karina at this point because i haven't seen how she interacts with people i think karina very much um while she did leave home um and i think she truly thinks it was the right choice um and, and made things easier for her sister uh, um, there's a certain amount of fun and joy in that leaving. Whereas with Lorna, there's a heavy weight of responsibility, both from leaving and also from uh, her secondary culture, basically, that she ended up being steeped in with the Fae. And so she has these heavy responsibilities hanging over her head, where I don't think Karina has any of that. Um, Karina will protect her group because that's the one thing she's latched onto that she's good at. Um, but there isn't the sense of I have to go back or I can't go back or maybe I should go back. I, I, I think there's a little bit of her that probably I don't think she'd willingly go back right now. She's um, but I think that's because she thinks she made the right choice so that her sister could flourish and so that um because she didn't fit there anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, and again, like this is me trying to be very subtle with things uh, and probably failing miserably. Uh, but whereas with, like I said, with Lorna, there is this great weight of responsibility of I failed once, I've failed again. I'm, you know, um, there's that balance of what you convince yourself is right and what probably is right. And and so, um, and, and our DM in, in Ether Realms has played with that that of two worlds kind of situation, which I wrote into Lorna's backstory. Um, and he's latched onto that and has almost put me in tears multiple times putting <laughs> me in these positions where I'm like, I we have one session where um, he showed her, uh, we're actually in Lore's character's uh, home, family home kind of situation. And she has a dream of this specific location this mountain and and this empty throne and all these and i'm sitting there like i i messaged steve the dm after the game and i'm like i'm so sorry she couldn't make a, st a strong choice like i wanted to do amanda wanted to be decisive and be like you know this is what she's gonna choose and here we go um but the last time she did that she ran away from home and now we've discovered that home is destroyed. The area is destroyed. Her father died. Her entire family, the entire clan, the entire tribe, whatever, is missing. Um, and so there's that. There's the similarity, I guess, in that they both are steeped in a faith, per se. Um, and there is a certain aspect of, I guess, kind of Celtic Norse to both of them a little bit. Um, 
but other than that it's like their their whole intent came from different locations so really long answer to uh, <laughs> not, not a terribly simple question actually no it um, wasn't what what about what about what about you Katel is jaded. She has problems mentally, emotionally. She's drama and trauma. <laughs> and Vidya's not, because she doesn't know any better, for the most part. Because she's gone through. When you don't have relationships, except for one. Yeah, she's only had one relationship, where Katel had several relationships, whether they be good or bad. Um, and. All of her knowledge is from her experience with this individual and what she's read in books, fiction and historical, because she did study history. So, and finding the balance of, and realizing how real and accurate those are to real life. Like, Katana loves fairy tales, but she knows they're fairy tales. Yeah. For Vidya, it's she where knows do... what fairy tales are she knows they're not real but also like where do people get these ideas from so for her there's it's one's in a more fantastical almost blissful right. unawareness and the other one is very much aware of how cruel the world can be so, so watch eat their elms Monday nights at 5 p.m pacific <laughs> standard time and then whenever we get started with this watch chronicles of Revere. yeah yes whenever the Heck, that gets air. Yes, I I'm believe... going to be real honest. I'm a little bitter at my accent choice for uh, Lorna Realms now because I'm like, that would kind of work, but there's, I cannot do anything. So I have no idea. I, I don't do know. Do you have a voice a for uh, I don't know that there's going to be a true accent to her. I, no, I've here's always... what you do for a Norse character you go, you who picks them up. Because that guy is Scandinavian as it gets. Yeah, no, uh, I've, I've toyed with a few ideas of different things. Um, a lot of times I, I find that I enjoy playing the characters that have voices that are just tone changes or mm -hmm. it's, it's mild Doesn't need to be an accent. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't need to be an accent. And I think that's something that a lot of people need to worry, you know, realize. Um, as much as we try, you know, we're, we're, we're performing and we're having... Um, there doesn't always have to, especially if you've got a whole group of people doing them. It's actually one of the things I loved about uh, what Marisha did with Bo in uh, campaign two is she didn't go for an accent. She deepened her voice a little bit. Um, and it's more just the, the cadence and the tone that she uses with mm -hmm. Bo that makes Bo yes. Bo. Um, and Ashley Johnson did the same thing with with Yasha. Yes. Ashley says she is the she she jokes she's horrible at accents, especially compared to the rest of them, and so she gets very self conscious of it. And so, what I love about her is she doesn't really do true accents. She toys with things and toys with tones of voices. And so I, I've been playing more with that kind of aspect. Is that what I'll settle on? Mm. I don't know what's gonna come out of my mouth, I'm but excited. I don't know. It's also easier to keep that in check because especially if you pick a tougher accent, like I have a character who's got a Scottish accent, so I gotta stay oh. in an accent all the time versus Korrigar, my prepared. He just has a deeper voice. Well, in Ether Realms, we have, we yeah, have yeah, me but... who's using kind of a Scotch-Irish blend-ish um, oh, Scotch kind of. It, it, well, it's not true. I, it, it's it's this blend that I've found that I enjoy. Um, and then Connor came in with this kind of, it's a Cockney accent, but it's got a little bit of... Almost, almost a, um, um, what is it called? What is it called? Brooklyn. Yeah, almost like got a, a little Brooklyn bit. air to it. And so... Um, and then we have somebody with a southern accent and um and Cattell has this very proper way of speaking and then Lexi is very much um is very much probably pretty is probably the one the truest to the care the player's true voice um and so we'll have moments Connor and I joke all the time where it's like nope that's 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 that's, that's Dodger. not not my nope, voice that's, that's you know and, uh, and I'll start talking and all of a sudden I'll go that's not the accent <laughs> Well, good thing to know too, because if you're talking in accent and you say something, I'm not gonna ask, did you actually say that? I'm just gonna assume you did because you're you saying- You know, to be fair, there, there gets a point with Ether Realms um, 
in many sessions where about an hour in, I pretty much don't very frequently switch out unless it's a quick question. And I haven't been taught, but if I'm in the, and I've been talking in character and then I'll switch it off just to ask the question out of character and back in only to help the DM with that. But a lot of times I get into it because once you get flowing with it, you are comfortable with it and it just becomes natural. Mm -hmm. um, and I know Connor does the same with Dodger quite a bit. I know Bellamy does a lot of the same. Um, and I'm dropping all these names, so you need to come watch the show to find out who they are. We're uh, Bellamy does the same with his Southern accent. Um, the one who I know doesn't do it a lot is John, who plays Cedric. Uh, but which he's actually changed Cedric's accent because of some things that have happened in yeah, story. Yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah, it's Four. it's different styles, you know. Um, but a lot of times, if I stay in accent, I will frequently identify that I am asking a meta question, right. or it's or it's really obvious I'm asking right. a meta question. Oh, no, I'm talking more along the lines. Of you're talking in accent, like saying something like snarky to the NPC that you didn't actually want to say, and I'm like, oh, you said that in accent, so I'm guessing assume you said it out loud. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> It'll be fun. Yeah, I'm so I'm excited impressed. to start playing. No. Okay. I, I'm kind of nervous, but also we're, terrified we're, and we're excited. We're over time, so we need Let's to go. close, but remember to... I don't to get through all the questions, I and then asked an extra. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. I just like talking with you guys. But anyway, um, one first, not the first week of May, I think that's when we're going to record these, will be pre-recorded just because of the nature of the setup, the players, it's just easier time for zones. all of us, time zones. So, um, but we will probably be either airing the second or the third week of May. So, have that'll fun. Be, that'll be on Saturdays, correct? Yes, on Saturdays. Be It'll be great. Watching, and you'll be watching them alongside us because it's pre-recorded, so we'll be watching. Yeah, yeah so we'll be in the chat. And in some chat. of us, some of us mod, so we might be playing Tiny Tina Wonderland while we're. Hey, sponsor us. Uh... I'm not even a mod. I was in the chat watching myself DM and cringing at all of my DM choices, going, "Ooh, I chose that." Uh, <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> generally hate watching myself play on playbacks, and I've started forcing myself one because I think it makes you. a better but also because i need to remember things and i'm like i was in the moment so i didn't write this down fred what did i say <laughs> I, know, I can already see myself being like like thinking in the moment this is the perfect accent or voice for this character and then watching it later that was a horrible choice of accent was, we're gonna be judging ourselves along with you yeah, yeah you'll be judging <laughs> my DM skills and i'll be judging them with you and looking at the comments as people go "Ooh, awkward voice and i'm like i agree <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We had a lot of fun, obviously. Um, look out for Chronicles of Revere, and we'll see you next time down by the lakeside. Bye. Bye.